Hello and thanks for stopping by. This is Ghost Rider for the PlayStation 2, released by 2K Games in 2007. I picked this disc up for 7 or $8, I think, and I wasn't sure what type of game it was. I knew it was Ghost Rider, but past that, I kind of was taking a chance. I think overall I made a pretty good choice. This game is the same style as Devil May Cry. It's a hack and slash adventure where you play Ghost Rider and you progress through this game by dispatching demons as he usually does in the comics. Before I get too far into gameplay, I think I have to point out the animated weight screens are pretty great. Um, the animated screens just look great. Ghost Rider looks awesome. You'll see a flaming skull head. Uh, I mean, what's not to like about that? I'm not going to go into the specifics of Ghost Rider in terms of his backstory, but the general description is this. He's a good guy. He was tricked into becoming a servant of the devil. As a servant, he has Ghost Rider powers. He doesn't run around committing crimes or anything like that, but he is tasked with helping the devil keep the balance between heaven and hell. When demons get unruly or escape, he's the tool that sends them back to where they belong. There have also been many ghost riders over the centuries, I guess, but this one is around the character of Johnny Blaze, who's a biker. For him, his ghost rider powers are styled after this. He's got a leather jacket, he's got a mix of chains and fire, and he has a demon motorcycle as well. It all looks pretty great on screen. You start this game by being pulled into hell. In hell, you need to dispatch a bunch of demons before you can get back out. These are basically the early training levels, and though you're weaker than you will be later in the game, you have plenty of power. Basically, the early stages are where you get used to the controls, and it gives you enough experience points to upgrade your basic statistics and add some combos to your mix. It feels like a well-balanced early game. Like many games in this style, you're going to enter some areas, and there'll be some sort of a door of some type. It'll wash over in red and clearly show you that there's a barrier. You need to defeat whatever was in the room before you can unlock that door. Now, start mashing buttons. Combos aren't too unreasonable to perform, that's nice. And generally, you don't need to rely on long strings of button presses to get the job done. As you defeat demons, you're going to be filling a meter. And when you have enough energy in this meter, you can press R2, and you'll pull out and shoot your demon sawed-off shotgun. And I have to admit, it's awesome to wield. The R1 button is your block move. Also, when you press this, it absorbs all the little energy bits that are floating about the air when you dispatch enemies. L2 is your special life drain move. Honestly, I forgot about this for some time, because I was busy using the energy meter for the shotgun. It has a special animation, and it helps you clear larger areas. Usually you make some announcement about sending demons back to hell, and all this crazy stuff happens. It's fun. The right analog stick offers a really useful dodge that'll help get you out of jams, and I like how this handles because it moves you far enough away to actually be useful. I've played other games where the dodge just doesn't turn out to be that useful, so you kind of ignore it, but here, it works really well. When you beat up some demons, you might see a notify when they get stunned, and basically it's asking you to press a button. I'm pretty sure it's always the circle button. If you do this, you're going to execute some sort of a kill animation. They're always fun to look at, and I am a fan of this. It's just, it's fun. There's also a meter that might appear as you start to perform successful combos if you're not getting hit by enemies. It's going to decrease when the action stops. You'll see it start to drain. But in some cases, you can't defeat certain enemies without it. Sometimes enemies show up and they have a shield that's floating around them, and there'll be a word on it. Maybe it'll say, Condemned. And then when you are fighting other creatures in the area, and you do a couple combos, Maybe you'll get a meter that appears on the screen that says damned. Okay, if you see this, this is good. You can defeat more enemies, and eventually, if you can get enough strings together, the damned meter will transform and become the condemned meter. If you have the condemned meter, you can now defeat condemned demons, which means you can break through that shield. If you keep up with the offense, you might even get one step higher and get to the brutal level meter. When you switch to brutal, actually the screen changes color, which is really nice to see, and it makes it feel like you've made an achievement of some kind, and you can defeat brutal enemies. Also, when you get to brutal, it's going to stay on this meter. It's not going to decrease over time. It's going to stay brutal until you get hit or you leave a zone. It'll make more sense when you run into it, I think. There's a tutorial level in hell that explains this well enough. So I get about an hour into this game, and the one thing that stood out for me is this, this feeling that it was starting to get a little monotonous. It just felt like there should be more variety with the demons that I'm fighting, and I'm wondering why an hour into the game I've not seen any human-shaped demons. I guess eventually they do show up, but it just seems like it would be a thing. I mean, 
Ghost Rider is human looking, and if all the demons just look like monsters, it feels like there's a missed opportunity here. I think if there was more variety within the first hour, I think it would help. I mean, eventually we get ninjas, but it takes a while. I feel like you need to start giving me variety before I start to get bored. Also, there are motorcycle levels that are sort of interspliced here and there. Now, I'm not going to say it's not fun to barrel along on a flaming motorcycle, but by the time my save game hit the hour mark, I've been through at least four motorcycle stages. I wanted less motorcycle and more walking around demon smashing. I just don't like getting to a stage and thinking, oh, this again. Now, as far as gameplay is concerned, I also don't like backtracking in a map. If I missed something, sure. But the game has you go down a path to do something, and then it makes you walk back through the same path in the other direction. It just sometimes feels off in a game like this. It makes me suddenly lose the exploration aspect of the journey, and now I'm just repeating something I already did. It's like they're trying to stretch out the gameplay a little bit. It just makes the game feel a little less engaging. There feels like there's also a lot of loading time, or loading zones. I mean, maybe not. Maybe they're not really lengthy. I mean, most of these are like two or three seconds, which is great, but there are plenty of them. And when you get a whole bunch of two-second waits, you walk down a hallway, you go through a door, it loads for two seconds. Then you walk down a hallway again, and you don't even fight any creatures, and you go into another door, and then it loads for another two seconds. It just feels like certain areas might be a little, a little wasted or a little lost on this. Plus, it's making me wait for all these different screens. It's, I don't know. It, I guess it's not too much. The first real boss fight was where I started to actually die in the game. That's about an hour and a half into the game, um, at least in terms of my save file size. As for the dialogue of the first boss, well, if you get to it, it's pretty terrible. I mean, she doesn't even say much, but in the middle of the battle, it's just, I wish she wasn't talking. After beating the boss, though, then something unexpected kind of happened. In between the levels, you get these comic book panel stories that kind of work like cutscenes in this game. And after you beat this particular boss, Blade shows up. The character of Blade. Now, I did no research before popping in this game, so... First of all, to see any other Marvel character in it is going to be a bonus, but the fact that it was Blade, I was not expecting that. Also, as soon as this happened, I started looking into it. Apparently, after you beat the game, you can play it again as the character of Blade. Totally unexpected. It's strange here, too. The camera in the game sometimes moves to these sort of clever perspective shots. There were a few times in the game that I found myself thinking, that I was almost playing a Resident Evil game. It was kind of strange. I'd be in a hallway, and the camera would just be at this this weird but perfect angle, and it kind of struck me. Overall, the story, I have to say it's convoluted. Every now and again, you pick up an energy sphere, and the game says something like, oh, now you can defeat earth magic, or now you can defeat water magic. I have no idea what this means. I'm like three hours into the game. Where did this come from? It's a totally wasted description on me. Up until that point, I've not run into either type of magic, or at least if I did, I didn't notice it. This game isn't about magic. I didn't go through this game thinking, now I'm fighting water magic, now I'm fighting earth magic. No, it's just it's just weird to see this. What good is alerting me to the fact that there's a new magic that I can defeat when I wasn't even aware of it to begin with? It just seems strange. I literally haven't used any magic in the game that I'm aware of. These were all demon powers. Nobody's mentioned magic. As for level design, well, this was the era of games that seemed to love gigantic hallways and tunnels. Also large, oversized, gigantic elevators, where as they move upwards, some sort of a fight occurs on the platform. Things are generally large and open, and clearly this is not something an architect would actually design. There's no real logic to these sizes. They become tedious after a while, but it does give you an area to fight, I suppose. It's really not that uncommon for this style of PS2 game. I've seen this in a bunch of different properties. So this is one of those games that also doesn't feel very groundbreaking. There's nothing different about it, not enough anyway, to set it aside from similar games. And it doesn't have any sort of a story that captivates me in pretty much any way. The level design is reasonably bland. Like I said, things are huge. And it can be repetitive. However, I can't get past the fact that I'm playing Ghost Rider. And he has a decent moveset, and it's certainly fun to wipe out waves of demons. 
The combos are pretty good, and your special abilities and the shotgun, they're fun to manipulate when your meter gets full. I really enjoy smashing stuff with this character. I can't say it's as good as Devil May Cry or God of War, but it's certainly entertaining. Also, you can play the game as Blade. Deal. Now, I haven't beaten this game as of this video, but I'm definitely going to keep playing at it. I'm a few hours in, I don't know, three or four. It's just brainless hack and slash fun, even though I wish it had more variety. Well, that's all I have today for Ghost Rider for the PlayStation 2. Thanks for stopping by for a look, and I'll catch you on another video.